Help Let's check the damage here. We've got all of our flasks up. No I cannot do this. I'll start cycloning. And we'll just do that. So that's the damage, pretty much. Welcome. It's your friendly neighborhood, Badger here. And I'm back for... Wouldn't you know it, another build showcase. Now, I know I jump around on builds quite a bit, and you may have seen a few other builds uh, popping up on the YouTube over the last couple of weeks, uh, but I have come across uh, and heard about for a while General's Cry and how overpowered it can be in certain situations. So I decided to reuse my Glacial Hammer Berserker that I leveled up and turn it into a General's Cry Berserker. Hold up, I forgot to talk about BPL, so I'm just going to slot this in right here. If you don't know about BPL or Badger Private League, there is a link down below to the video and the sign up as well in that video. You can definitely go check that out and watch that. Basically a TLDW, too long didn't watch. It's a private league that is faction versus faction based. You get randomized onto a very large team and you compete together with that team to uh, do certain goals such as kill a bunch of bosses, collect boss uniques, uh, level up your team, uh, and uh, earn points through doing all of that. It's some of the most fun that I've ever had in Path of Exile. Yes, I know I'm biased, it is my private league, but it's so much fun to work together uh, as a team and not just play solo yourself. So definitely check it out if you're looking for something a little bit different. Thank you so much. Let's jump back to the video. Now, what is General's Cry? It's a war cry that basically uh, summons, uh, I guess, uh, copies of yourself or copies of your main skill uh, out of corpses that then do that main skill once or one rotation of that main skill, and then they dissipate. Uh, so the build is totally focused around uh, a very short cooldown General's Cry as we run around, but then also cycloning and uh, spawning corpses on the ground, and then your General's Cry... Uh, Guys, they kind of pop up here, they look pretty sick, and then they do their ability. Now, a lot of people are playing a single target version of this with Blade Flurry. I've decided to play around a little bit with Perforate, but uh, I've also been playing around with things like Chain Hook and other things like that. Let's just say that with the amount that I've invested into this already, I've spent about 2x, not 2x, 2 hours uh, gearing this character, and I spent maybe about 80 Exalted Orbs or something like that. Um, we're using Abyssus, we're using Aspect of Carnage, so we're pretty squishy, but there is also a very nice uh, hardcore version of this with Champion that you can do uh, that is extremely tanky. This honestly still feels pretty tanky, although I do die to uh, some one-shots every now and then. I'm sure you guys want to see uh, what it actually plays like, though, so we're going to jump into a map here. Fortunately, this is a core map, so it'll take a little bit, but it's got Veritania at the end, so we can see the single target on uh, an Awaken Level 8 um, Veritania here. So, uh, Perforate, as you can see, we kind of just, uh, we Cyclone through, and then our Generals Cry, they kind of run around and they slam the ground with Perforate in our Sand Stance. And the good thing is, Perforate, yes, does switch between Sand Stance and, uh, and, uh, Blood Stance. Um, very, very, uh, nicely with the single target here. We can see on this boss here, kind of jump in, and, ah, it's just kind of dead there. Although that was just our Cyclone pretty much doing that, because we have some pretty nice, uh, DPS on the Cyclone as well, even though it's not even linked. Right, because my damage is it's it's pretty strong on this character. So let's just zoom all the way through. Let's see if we can get to Veritania. I could show you the single target. So the downsides of this build is, uh, well, the version that I'm playing, the squishiness. Uh, look, it's it's pretty squishy. I do have Fortify up all the time. I do also have Katava's Teachings, which is uh, a threshold jewel. That's going to be uh, uh, not a threshold jewel, sorry, a um, a cluster jewel, a unique cluster jewel that's giving me. Uh, basically life on consuming corpses every second, which is pretty nice. Uh, but we are still very susceptible to one-shots. Now, I would say that playing the champion version of this is uh, very much a good way around that, as well as not using Abyssus. I'm a little bit overkill on damage uh, now with Abyssus. I really don't even need to be using Abyssus. I could just use uh, another uh, helmet. But we've got plus two perforate spikes on the Abyssus as well, giving us some more damage, right? So, let's uh, jump on through. We've just got to kill the core boss, and then we can also kill uh, the Veritania as well. So let's uh, jump through here. Um, the other interesting thing is this build uses a Berserk. Uh, Berserk is uh, very, very strong. We're not actually using Chainbreaker like the other build that I've showcased, the uh, Ballista Champion. Uh, we're just actually getting a bunch of Rage through the Warcry node on uh, Berserker itself, this one here. It grants 10 rage per 5 power if you have less than 25 rage. And we'll talk about, we're actually getting max rage every time we Warcry here. 
uh, which is pretty insane. Um, so, uh, let's just uh, do the uh, single target here. You can see here, it's a little bit of a joke to kind of just like... Uh, well, all we're do really doing here is just uh, cycloning around and holding left click. See, as I said, you take a lot of single target damage, as you may have seen there. Um, which is uh, a, a little bit rough. It really is a little bit rough. Um, and that's all there down there. It had to be a core boss, didn't it? Uh, but we'll be able to see the single target damage on Veritania pretty soon. Wait for these animations to finish. What else can I talk about while we're waiting for all of this stuff to happen? Yeah, as I said, Berserk. Uh, we're getting infinite power from Red Blade Banner. I'm using a Paradoxica. It's just because uh, it's just a very nice combo right there. Uh, because all of the skills that you're mainly using for General's Cry that have the most damage, like Blade Flurry, like Perforate, they have really, really good um, damage effectiveness and really good uh, added flat physical damage from the skill itself. Alright, so now we're done there. Let's jump into here. So I'm going to switch to Blood and Sand because I'll switch back to uh, Blood Stance to get my extra spikes. Well, Let's check the damage here. We've got all of our flasks up. No I'll start cycloning. And we'll just do that. So that's the damage, pretty much, as you can see there. Um, it was uh, a less than one second kill on Veritania. Uh, it's kind of broken. Yes, I've invested 80x into the build, but there is a budget version of this that I'm going to be developing over the next couple of days, and hopefully we'll have a build guide for you uh, at some point fairly soon of this build, but the budget version's very cheap, and you can get pretty respectable damage there as well. Um, so that's the build. Let's just have a quick look at the passive skill tree. I've decided to go for dual clusters, and the medium clusters are all Warcry clusters. So you've got things like Mob Mentality to get Endurance, Frenzy, and Power Charges. You've got things like Haunting Shout to intimidate enemies. You've also got uh, Led by Example to get Onslaught when you Warcry, so permanent Onslaught basically with this build. Then Provocateur as well to give Crit Strike Chance against Taunted Enemies and Crit Strike Multi. And then basically over here we've just got two uh, of uh, Provocateur and Warning Crawl to give increased armor per 5 power for 8 seconds when you Warcry, so we've got two of them. Then using some pretty nice clusters with Life and Crit Strike Multi. I don't even have a Watcher's Eye yet, but I think I'm going to purchase a pretty nice Watcher's Eye. And then basically just getting all of the Warcry nodes, or a couple of Warcry nodes, basically to give us some good uh, Warcry cooldown recovery, and using Call to Arms. That's basically the tree. There is a link down below if you want that to the POB of this build right now. Uh, we're just shy of 5k, 5K, 5K life, so I definitely could invest more into getting a, a little bit more life around the place. Uh, but that is basically it. Rislatha's Coil, some pretty nice steel rings. Some uh, Vulnerability, Crit Chance, uh, Hands of the High Templar, and as I said, Abyssus as well. Now, another really good modifier that you can have on an enchantment for a helmet is plus one to maximum uh, number of your generals that you can summon with General's Cry. That's a 20% more multiplier, pretty much just like that, as a helm enchant. So it's very, very strong. Um, so that is basically the build. Uh, as I said, if you're really interested in this build, leave a comment down below saying you want a build guide for this one. Uh, because the more that more people that I see that are like, I really want to play this build, the more I will actually want to actually get that build guide out. But I will be working towards it because as I said, like this is so smooth to play. Perforate seems amazing for the build, but you can chuck so many things in. I think Blade Flurry has the best damage. Uh, and Lacerate has some pretty good clear on it. Um, but I've tested a bunch of others as well. As I said, Chainhook surprisingly does pretty good damage. So, thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, hit that sub button down below, like it, uh, and uh, that is pretty much it. Yes, I am live right now. I'm uh, recording a video right now as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Badger, out.